Hey yo, what's up my little coders? Let me show you in this tutorial how to solve the little question number 378, Kate's smallest element in a sorted matrix. Basically, we are given an n by n matrix where each of the rows and columns are sorted in the ascending order, and we need to return the Kate's smallest element in the matrix. And also note, guys, that it's the Kate's smallest element in the sorted order, not just like the Kate's distinct element. Here's one example, right? That's the input matrix. I also have the visual representation of it. That's the input matrix, and k is equal to 8. So we want to return like the k's smallest element. It doesn't mean that we just take this matrix and then after that you just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, here's the 8th element, you just return it straight away. No, it doesn't work like that. Even though actually in this case the answer would be the same, but the logic is a bit different. You know, this matrix is sorted by rows and the columns but it's not sorted all the way through. If you just iterate through it, 1, 5, 9, 10, 11, 13, yeah, until this point is like perfectly sorted, but after 13 you get 12, so it's only like rows and columns, but not the whole matrix. The idea is that if you take these whole elements from this matrix and if you just sort them, in this case, yes, you can take the 8th one and just return it after that. That would be like the one of the ways to solve this problem. But yeah, anyway, I think it's clear now what we need to do, however, it's not clear probably, if you're watching this video, how to do it, right? Let me first of all start with the brute force solution, and I will quickly explain it, and after the brute force one, I will move to a bit more better way of solving this problem as well. Let me just write the code now. Oh, okay, dokie, my little coders, here's our brute force solution, it's a very simple one, I have a picture for that. First of all, we just create one-dimensional array to store all the values from the matrix. Initially, all the values in one-dimensional array would be equal to zero when we create it. Then after that, we would iterate through all the elements from the matrix in the same order as they appear. We would put all these elements at the right indexes to the one-dimensional array. Here we go. After we've done that, we would sort this like one-dimensional array and in the end, we just would return the case element from it, right? And this would, this would work, let, let me actually submit it. Yeah, it would pass all the test cases, however, it's a brute force solution and it can be improved a bit. And one of the ways to improve the solution is to use the binary search. If you're not sure how to use the binary search in this case, and you want to figure out that, and you want to understand that, just stay with me, I will quickly write the code now, and then I will go through it with you in more details. Alright, let me explain you what would be like the better way of solving this problem using the binary search, which will be more efficient. First of all, by the definition of the matrix, because all the rows and columns are sorted, we definitely know that the minimum element in this matrix will be located at index 0, 0. That's why we defined it here. And also we know that the element at the bottom right would be the maximum element in this matrix. This is because the rows and columns are sorted. We also define it here. Then, while the mean is not equal to max, we would perform some binary search here. And to perform the binary search, of course, we need to first of all get the middle element. And the middle element is equal to the mean plus the max minus mean in the brackets divided by 2. And on the first iteration, it would be equal to 8. And sometimes the same mid element, it might be presented in the matrix, but sometimes it will not be. In this case, we don't have the element which is equal to 8, right? So it's just like the mid between the min and max, not like the exact element from the matrix. But okay, you will understand why it works in this way just in a few minutes. Keep watching, guys. After that, we will count, right? We will take the mid element and we would count how many elements before this like mid value are less or equal than this mid element. We would go inside this function. Here it is which is called count less or equal. Then, first of all, we would define some variables, so the count to just like keep track how many elements are less than the middle one, less or equal. Then the comb, initially we would consider the most right comb, right? Like in this case, it will be this comb, and we would start with the first row. Then we would go inside the while loop, and while the row is less than the length of the matrix, and at the same time while the comb it's like greater or equal than zero, which means that like while we are still inside the matrix, 
and not outside the matrix, you would perform some operations here. The first one would be to check if the current value, so 9, right? If it's less or equal than the mid value, which is like 8. 9 is not less or equal than 8, that's why we would not go inside this if statement, we would go inside the else statement and we would decrement our column, right? So now we would consider only this column. Because we check this value, and because the columns are sorted, it means that all the elements below this value, all the elements in the same column below this value, they cannot be else less or equal than the mid value, because they will be definitely greater than this element. That's why, yeah, we basically decrement the, the column. And now we will consider this element. And here we go. 5 is actually less or equal than 8, right? So we would go inside this if statement, and we can update our counter. And we don't just say, like, counter plus one, we can say counter plus the column and then plus one, because basically, if this element is less or equal than the mid value, we know that all the elements in this row, all the elements on the left side, would be else less or equal than the mid value. We can just like take all of them, and after that go straight away to the next row, right? That's what we would do. Then this element, it's not less or equal than the mid value, so we decrement the column, then 10 is not less or equal than the mid value, so we decrement the column, and yeah, here we go, we went outside the matrix. This condition, because the column is equal to minus 1 now, this condition doesn't work anymore, anymore. so we would go outside the while loop and we would return our count. Count is equal to 2, which means that like, two elements in this matrix are OS or equal than the mid value, right? Perfect. Having this count value, we can check something, right? If the count is less than the K value, so if you found less elements, than the k value, and in this case we actually did, because count is equal to 2 and k is equal to 8. In this case we can update our minimum, right? Because there's no point to consider anymore the mid value with the, which is equal to 8, because we definitely know that like this mid value will not give us a right answer, because there's just like only two elements less than this mid value. It means that we can increase our mean value, so that like in the next iteration, our mid value would increase as well. That's why we just update the mean value. Now it would be equal to 9, which will mean that, like, when we will go on the next iteration of the while loop, we would have a new mid value, which would be equal to 12. And the mean value, yeah, it would be equal to 9 now, not to 1. Okay, so now we can basically check how many elements are less or equal in the matrix given a new updated mid value. We would go inside this function again. Basically, you know, this logic would give a 6 to us because there are 6 elements which are less than or equal than the mid value. And yeah, having that, we would check if the current count value is less than the k. So 6 is still less than k. It means that, okay, we need to increment our mean value again because we need to go further. So we increment it and now it becomes 13. So we would consider another range, right? We would go on the next iteration of the while loop, and now basically we already reduced the problem a lot. So right now our min is 13, our max is 15, so basically we have only three candidates for the answer, right? So we are close already, but you know, not there yet. Okay, having this like three elements, min is 13, mid is 14, max is 15, again, we would go inside the count. We already like know, me and you, we know that for example, because we know the answer, right? The answer should be 13. We know that, for example, uh, a number which is equal to 15, it would, it's like the ninth element. But because 14 is not presented in our matrix, it still would be like the eighth one. Because the mid is 14, and in theory, even though we don't have it in the matrix, it's like the eighth element. But the answer should be 13, right? Because we don't have 14 in our matrix. So let's see what the program will do with that. Basically, we would go again inside this like function, now we will see that, oh, actually, there are now 8 elements which are less or equal than the mid value. Which means that, okay, there's no point to consider this element, but now we would not update the mid value, we would update the max value, right? Now max will be equal to 14, not to 15 anymore, and now we will go on the next iteration of the while loop, and now we will just consider two elements, 13 and 14, even though we know that, yeah, we don't have 14 in our matrix. Let's still see how the program will sort it out. So, okay, having that, we have a new mid element, which is equal to 13. We would go inside this function again. Here we will see that, okay, actually there are 8 elements which are less or equal than the k. 
perfect. In this case, we would update our max value. So now it will be equal to the mid element. So now it will be equal to 13. And in this case, the mean right now, 13, is equal to the new max, 13. So in this case, we would go outside the while loop and would return the mean value, or else we can return the max value, it doesn't matter, because this while loop only breaks when the mean and, mean and max are equal. So in this case, we would return our answer. And yeah, this is how it works, guys. Let me just run it. How it works, let me submit. Yeah, as you can see here, now the runtime is 0 millisecond. It's like better than with the brute force solution. And this way is more efficient than the brute force solution. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, guys, please give it a like and subscribe. Challenge your friends to see if they can solve this question efficiently or not. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Good luck.